Hey, hi to my sister Deidre, who just dropped this, man. This just came across the drop desk, man. Anything y'all want me to share, man, hit me up. I'll do my best to get to it. Music at 432thedrop.com. And my sister hit me up with this. She said, this looks very suspect, drop. And in reading it, there's a lot of red flags, man, when it comes to these ancient artifacts. They're saying it's being smuggled out of Iraq, man. You know what I mean? First of all, man. First of all, man. Oh, man. Make sure y'all in the drop, drop, chatter, chat, 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 chatter. My bro Yosef just dropped in, man, and he uh got a quiz for the tribe. He got a quiz for week 15. We just hit week 15 in season number three right here at 432 to drop. A hop to the eat the squad, putting it in, man, putting in them rounds. The squad, but the squad is putting in them rounds, man, putting in that energy, that action, so that y'all can get the information and get the flow and get the vibration. So my bro Yosef, man, goes above and beyond, man, and really sets the tone. You know what I mean? The bro really sets the tone when it comes to dedication and just thinking outside the box and just really embracing the classroom flow, you know what I mean? And you know, <laughs> along with the class comes a test, man. So the bro printed out a test. He put it right here in the drop chat. I got it up for you right here. And it's a beautiful thing because it's talking about primary water. And I can't really think of too many subjects as important as as the mem, man. The water. You know what I'm saying? So I told the bro, man, just keep going with this because I can never get tired of digging on this primary mem, you know what I'm saying? So look, get the quiz out the chat. I'm also going to put this link below. Take the quiz, get it back to Yosef. He got prizes and stuff. He got prizes and stuff. He said, upload all quizzes to josehip98.jh at gmail.com. All right. Or if you need to get it, you can get it to me. I can get it to him, whatever is easier to you. Uh, just just get the quiz in. There will be three winners, first, second, and third. Turn in ASAP, person with the best time and highest score win. Nice and easy. Dracon's on Quam. Let's go. Nice and easy. It's only about 14. I think it's about 14 questions on this, the bro Yosef. So, again, <clears throat> it takes time and it takes energy to not just uh, do the recon, to drop the drop, to keep the water flowing every week. Make sure you hit in the uh, energy frequency toe kept classroom every Sunday, 7 o'clock Pacific, 9 Central. Uh, the bro has an amazing YouTube channel. Please make sure you're in that classroom as well. Click that red button. And uh, to do all that and have the time to type this out, the bro got like, you know what I'm saying, four or five, five droplets as well. Just like myself, it's a lot, man. So I tip my hat to the bro, and it's, it's worth participating because, one, you're going to get the information, and two, you know what I mean? Show the bro that A-Hot, man. He, he's putting in the time to do this for you. So, you know what I mean? Don't ignore it, man. Pay attention to it and let us know how important this classroom is to you. You know what I'm saying? So take the quiz, man. Upload it. JoseHip98.jh at gmail.com. All right, look, man. Nice and easy. First question. Where and how do we access primary water, primary mem? All right, look. I'm, I'm going to leave you a little cheat. A little cheat sheet, man. <laughs> I'm going to leave you a little cheat sheet, man. Where, did, where I put it at, man. I put it somewhere. Here we go. This has some great information on it. If you want to know more about primary water, dig on the uh, recon of Stephen Reese uh, in the 1930s. And it goes along with a lot of these discoveries, just like G.E. Kincaid out the Grand Canyon around that time in the 30s. So much was going down in the 30s, 20s for investigation, exploratory purposes. Um, definitely recon this uh, Stephen Reese, man. So this is going to lead you there. It's going to take you there. But, you know, when you get around this, man, when you start to dig on this, you start to uh, hit on things that are body bags, man. You know, when it comes to the illusion of some type of water shortage or whatever the case is, or this bottle of water is, is anywhere is anything at all positive and valuable? This stuff is all chap, man. Like the bro say, it's all bad, man. So we got to access our primary water. And we're we're doing the recon right now. Love to the bro on how we can tap into that no matter where we're at to tap into the water. So, again, the first question the bro asked on 
the week 15 quiz is where and how do we access? How do we access it? Where do we access it? Come on. Number two, does primary mem have its own water source and no connection to groundwater on earth? True or false? Hey, 50 50. Let's go. Name the two testing processes we use to locate primary mem. Come on, man. I mean, it's all look, go get the drop from his YouTube. Go get the drop, you know what I'm saying? From his uh previous radio shows. I'm making sure we got all that updated on the site. Or, you know, just do the recon yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 gonna help lead you to some water right here with this link. But you gotta, you know, just do your recon because what you get out of it is really for you so that you can, you know, spread this great valuable drop to your droplets and your family so that you can tap in, tap in, clock in, clock in, man. And just get a drop your way, man. It's a lot of great recon going on. Love to Joseph to real. Renana Israel's in the building, man. Hey, how Renana Tao Sign, what it do, fam? Another Takum say is a Takum say just had another droplet. Hey, how Takum say, hey, how to your family, man? Uh, Mirror 144 Moon Boy, you already know. Ty Battle's up here somewhere, man, going crazy. <laughs> Ty Battle got the drop. Where she at? She says, have a yapa. Oh, there goes Ty Battle. She meme me again. Oh, that must be for Sparta time. Oh, hey, man, this is what we do to the hijacks. Lego. <laughs> this is Sparta. <laughs> I'm going to come off the metaphysical, magical cliff bow, man. Gotta love it, man. Ty Battles Boots are walking again, man. And we need it. We need that flood of pace. Look how she walk up on the hijack. First, she walk up on him. First walk up on him. And then we get a. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, I can watch this a thousand times, man. Hey. I appreciate everybody dropping it on the Cash App. It's a great way to get the water to us, to keep the lights on, to keep the website flowing, to keep the music stream flowing. Um, you know, any anything we got to do, man, to stock up for the merchandise or, you know, any any projects we want to save up for or anything like that. You just help us out a lot, man, by hitting up the cash app, whatever you do. Some <laughs> some family do one dollar a month, you know, five dollars here and there. I mean, whatever it is, it accumulates and we use it and it goes to a great, you know, cause and a great vision of a collective, you know what I'm saying? A collective flow. So all the links are below. I appreciate all the contribution from the cons, man. All the contributors. I appreciate y'all. So let's get it, man. Love to my sister, Deidre. Hobby Lobby purchased thousands of ancient artifacts smuggled out of Iraq. The craft supply giant will open its museum of the Bible in DC this fall. They're going to pay $3 million settlement. Now, anybody that's going to pay $3 million knows they're guilty of something. You dig? You don't just pay $3 million if you're completely innocent. So, already, you need to know that. Again, this article's written um, 2017, so this museum has already popped off, man. This museum is already happening. They call it the Museum of the Bible, right? But where they getting the artifacts? And why did they just pay $3 million law? Sell them. And you know the real fish thing about this? And love to my sister Deidre because she already know there's something wrong with this picture. Well, let's just read it. Hobby Lobby purchased thousands of ancient artifacts smuggled out of modern day Iraq. So what's ancient Iraq? Modern day Iraq, that's red flag number one, <laughs> via the United Arab Emirates and Israel. Israel, where is Israel? And where is modern day Iraq? Some they write. Because are these artifacts coming from the real Israel? The real Mesopotamia or Mesoamerica? Let's go. 
Attorneys for the Eastern District of New York announced on Wednesday as part of the settlement, the American Craft Supply mega chain will pay $3 million and the U.S. government will seize the illicit artifacts. So the U.S. government gets $3 million and they get to keep all these artifacts, thousands of artifacts. Let's go. Technically, the, the defendants in the civil forfeiture action are the objects themselves. Now, my Naga, I ain't never seen no shit like this before. Love to the sister Digit for dropping this. And we drop legal drop every uh, Monday, 8 o'clock Pacific, man. So I ain't never seen no legal drop like this. Have you ever seen a federal case where it says the United States of America versus the artifacts themselves? These mofos, Hobby Lobby, ain't even mentioned on the case, on the case name. They pay $3 million and the case ain't even against them. It's the USA versus the approximately 450 ancient cuneiform tablets and approximately 3,000 ancient clay boule, which are, you know, these type of like, you know, cylinder scroll type of joints. You know what I'm saying? Seals, like cylinder seals. Artifact. <coughs> so, how the fuck? How the fuck <laughs> is the defendant of this case the artifact, the object? As if it's a living entity. I mean, what if it loses? Is it going to be thrown in the pen? Is it going to be put in the penitentiary? Put in the prison blues or the grays or the greens? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The oranges? Which one? This federal case name is the United States of America versus approximately 450 ancient cuneiform artifacts approximately, approximately 3,000 ancient clay boulet. Are you fucking serious? Is this just a waste of time? Is it just play play? Or is it all, is it all about the money? With enough money, you're not even listed on the case. Oh, you got 3 million? Give us that 3 million. We won't even mention you in the case name. We'll, we'll make the defendant the artifacts as if they did something wrong. As if the artifacts did something against the United States Corporation. But what this really shows me is that this corporation has some type of beef with these artifacts. Which is why they're seizing and calling them illicit I mean, they didn't even want these artifacts displayed, my nigga. They said, give us them joints. Don't even put them in your museum. Because they opened their museum up, but they had to get the government back these artifacts. Now, the question then is, what wh what, and where, <laughs> what did the government do with these artifacts and where are they being stored today? Were they shipped back to Iraq? Where they put somewhere in some basement. You know what I mean? Let's go. Under any circumstances, this case will be wild. It involves thousands of ancient artifacts. That seem to have been stolen. All right. Key word. Pay attention to the details. Seem to have been stolen. Not that they were stolen. But they seem like they were. Maybe they were already here. Maybe they were right here in America the whole time. Where the pillaging of antiquities has been rampant. The long-standing trade of antiquities of dubious providence has become an especially sensitive topic in recent years. And a target of increased law enforcement scrutiny, ISIS has made some untold millions or billions by selling ancient goods, while nothing in the case indicates that these objects were associated with any terrorist group. The very nature of smuggled goods means their provenance is muddy. But the case really matters because of who's involved. The members of the Green family, which owns Hobby Lobby. That's interesting because none of these members are listed on the case name, right? 
The case is against the artifacts. U.S. versus the artifacts. That's the defendant. <laughs> That's like saying the USA versus drops drops laptop. Whatever drop was doing with his laptop, a hey, it's all good. Drop paid his three million dollars. So we're going to make the case USA versus Drops Laptop. I guess Drops Laptop might need an attorney. <laughs> the members of the Green family, which runs the Hobby Lobby chain, are committed evangelical Christians who are probably most famous for their participation in 2014 Supreme case Burwell versus Hobby Lobby. Oh, so Hobby Lobby can be a defendant. But not on this case. It's the artifact. Which helped dismantle certain birth control coverage requirements of the Affordable Care Act. The Greens are big collectors of ancient antiquities. They're also the primary visionaries and contributors behind the Museum of the Bible opening in Washington, D.C. this fall. Steve Green is the chairman of the board. The family's famous name now tied to a story of dealer intrigue in black markets is likely to bring even further scrutiny and attention as they prepare to open their museum. Is this bringing more scrutiny and attention? Have you heard from it anywhere else? This article was written in 2017. Everybody's, you know, popping off the museum. It's all good. Nobody's tripping. But what it does for us is it, it you know, gives that extra attention to the fact that all these museums are up on this, you know, sham, man. It's a big sham. And we're about to blow the lid off of it just by seeing clearly. Law enforcement officials report that in 2010, Hobby Lobby's president, Steve Green, visited the United Arab Emirates with the antiquities consultant to inspect more than 5,548 artifacts. More than. More than. It's funny that they give you an exact number, like 5,548, but they say it's more than that, though. So they're inspecting over 5,000, probably 6,000, probably 10,000 artifacts that are really ancient Naga artifacts. Because if it's the Museum of the Bible, my Naga, that means it has everything to do with you. If they're, if these Christians are bringing up biblical artifacts that have nothing to do with Christianity and everything to do with the Hebrews and everything to do with, you know what I'm saying, the ancient ones. That means that these are African-American artifacts, Negro artifacts, black man, black woman artifacts. Since we know that we are the people of the book. If, if we're the Israelites and you're opening a museum of the Bible, that means the museum is all about these Israelites. Now you're over here inspecting over 5,500 of our artifacts saying that they're coming from somewhere else. But watch this, watch this. These objects, which were precious and collectively worth millions of dollars, quote, were displayed informally, the complaint stated. Spread on the floor, arranged in layers on the coffee table, packed loosely in cardboard boxes, in many instances with little or no protective material between them. They included cuneiform tablets, which display writing use in ancient Mesopotamia, clay boule or balls of clay printed with ancient seals. Two Israeli dealers, Israeli dealers. So the people of of current Israel are all behind this. Israel's behind this. The Arabs are behind this. Everybody's in on it, man. Can you see the big picture? Everybody's in on it, but let's blow the lid off these ancient seals. Let's go. These two Israeli, not Israelite, right? That's a difference. Israeli dealers, one dealer from the United Arab Emirates were present. So Israel and the Arabs are working together. The objects allegedly belong to the family of a third Israeli dealer. So how did these thousands of objects belong to the family 
of somebody in Israel who's dealing these artifacts? How did this person in Israel own thousands of artifacts? Did they just buy them? Did they just, you know what I'm saying, smuggle them from America? <laughs> Watch this. One of the Israeli dealers sent Hobby Lobby a statement of provenance claiming that the objects were legally acquired through purchases made in the 60s. Uh-oh. 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 So, again, the objects belong to the family of somebody from Israel. <laughs> Current Israel, right? Not America Israel. The fake Israel, okay? Let's just say fake Israel. All right. So one of these fake Israel dealers sent Hobby Lobby a statement saying, oh, I I own these legitimately because they were legally acquired through purchases made in the 60s, my naga. So while we over here freedom fighting, civil rights active activating, <laughs> they're over here purchasing your Israelite Hebrew artifacts. Now, where were they stored before they were so-called smuggled from modern day Iraq? It said, where were these objects originally stored? And what does this have to do with America? Let's go. It also named a custodian who purportedly in 1970 took care of the objects while they were being stored in the United States states stop so all these thousands i mean how many they inspected more than 5048 5048 artifacts man ah, come on man come on man jam up jump <laughs> 5548 and you telling me that these 5,540 artifacts were already in America? They were already in America? And then they were shipped out to present day modern Iraq or Israel? And wherever else? And then so-called smuggled back to the United States? Or does it make more sense, my Nagas, that they were found in the United States, stored in the United States, and then just like the old rump goes, let's falsely label these things as if they come from another side of the world. Let's act, because we can't tell, we can't blow the lid off of this. I, I mean, what happened to G.E. Kincaid when he's showing all these Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon in the 1930s? Oh, but in the 1960s, somebody's making purchases just because they started making purchases in the 60s don't mean that these artifacts just popped up in the 60s. They were already here. And then these same objects <laughs> were being stored right here. Now you say, so when did when did they start? When did the looting begin? When did the looting begin? When did they start looting these uh, archaeological sites over there in Iraq? Because that's what they're trying to say is that, oh, well, they were they were looted, you know, from Iraq. And when when were they looted from Iraq? Were they looted before they were already in America or after they were shipped from America? Let's go. But the person never actually stored anything for the third Israelite or Israeli dealer the complaint alleges the Hobby Lobby never contacted the custodian the company went forward with the sale even though it had retained an antiquities expert who cautioned against the purchase I would regard the acquisition of any artifact likely 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 from Iraq so we don't know but maybe it is maybe it's not it's likely it's from Iraq as carrying considerable risk, the expert wrote in a memorandum shared with the company's in-house counsel, according to the complaint, quote, 
an estimated 200 to 500,000 objects have been looted from the archaeological sites in Iraq since early 1990s. Stop. Take a pause for the cause, man. Take a pause for the cause. So you telling us that the looting in Iraq started in the early 1990s. But the objects were already stored in America since 1970. So whatever looting is going on in 1990s is a consequence of the objects being shipped from the United States at least 20 years earlier. Then people said, oh shit, we need to get our hands on these precious artifacts from America. Precious artifacts that were already stored in America. Oh, let's ship them back. Let's ship them back to America. Act like they're from Iraq now. And then put them in a museum. And charge people to come check them out. And lie to their faces. And never tell them. That they were already in America. Since 1970s. These objects were being stored. In the United States. Alright. First we had over 5,000 artifacts. Now they're saying 500 thousand objects have been looted from archaeological sites in iraq since the 1990s man how much are they finding again you got to tune in every tuesday nine o'clock pacific we got a show called kalalus right here 432 to drop.com download the app get in the classroom because we're going over artifacts with hebrew writing on them dragons on them swords manaka Swords right here found in Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, all Kalalus. Kalalus means promised land. They're trying to link this stuff to Iraq, which is what? Connected with Iran or Persia. What's the etymology of Persia? Remember, we just went over that a couple drops ago. That Persia is only connected to this promised land, you know what I'm saying? Etymology. So it's only referring to a, a precious promised land. Persia. So what's the actual Persia? Where's the actual Iran? Where's the actual China? Where's the actual India? Where's the actual Africa? Ethiopia. On and on we go. Egypt. Again, G.E. Kincaid in 1930s was discovering Egyptian mummified, a whole tomb, a whole room in chambers. Chambers, my naga. Only three out of 2,000 habitation sites have been excavated around the Grand Canyon to this day, to this day that is on the record. They got everything blocked off. Everything's blocked off, man. Hundreds of thousands of, excuse me, over a million acres have not even been excavated or touched around the Grand Canyon. Touched, not even touched on record. So where are these 500,000 artifacts coming from? Why are they already being stored in the United States since at least the 70s or the 60s? Because they were making purchases since the 60s. In the United States. But now they're saying, uh, I think they're likely from Iraq. <laughs> An estimated 500,000 objects have been looted from archaeological sites in Iraq since the 1990s, man. So if they're already stored in America since at least the 70s, 20 years earlier, what are we talking about? What's happening in the 90s? Particular popular on the market and likely to have been looted are, are cylinder seals, cuneiform tablets, cultural objects looted from Iraq since the 90s are protected by special import restrictions. So so what's up with the 80s? Did, did did these artifacts not reach Iraq until the 90s? If they were being stored in America 
in the 70s? Did these artifacts just get there in the 90s? Is that, is that why the looting got popped off since 1990? And then they formed some protection by special import restrictions that carry criminal penalties and large fine. It can't be that criminal. It can't be that criminal because because the Green family and Hobby Lobby arrested on the case name. United States of America versus approximately 450 cuneiform tablets and approximately 3,000 ancient clay boule cylinder seals. The defendant is the cylinder seal. The defendant is the clay tablets. The defendant is the cuneiform tablet. Have you ever seen some shit like this before? How does Hobby Lobby and the Green family just wiggle out this thing? Oh, I'm sorry. They paid $3 million and gave over the artifacts to the government that were already stored, you know what I'm saying, smuggled out of the United States. Wow. It said Hobby Lobby wired 1.6 million to seven different bank accounts associated with five different people to pay for the items. The artifacts were shipped to the United States in multiple packages. Shipped to the United States? That's funny because they were stored in the United States in the 70s. But now they have false labels. And, you know, that's just a red flag letting you know that they're all being falsely labeled. They were also sent to multiple locations as the complaint notes the use of multiple shipping addresses for a single re recipient is consistent with methods used by cultural property smugglers to avoid scrutiny by customs. Okay, they have false invoices. You know, in January 2011, Customs and Border Protection seized five packages falsely labeled as originating in Turkey. Whoa, another false label, my naga. If they're falsely labeling it one way and falsely labeling it another way, how, how far-fetched is that they're also falsely labeling these things as coming out of Iraq, not being found in America? They're not labeling them as American artifacts. They're labeling them as Iraq Mesopotamia art artifacts, not Mesoamerica artifacts. Some they're labeled as originating in Turkey. So is it Turkey? Is it Israel? Is it Iraq? Is it America? They're all over the place with this one. So Customs and Border Patrol has seized, seized roughly 3,450 artifacts and the 450 ancient cuneiform tablets and 3,000 ancient clay boule for which the case is named <laughs> as part of the settlement to the government's civil action against Hobby Lobby. Oh, no, no, it ain't against Hobby Lobby. It's against the artifact. Hobby Lobby is not the defendant on this case. The company has accepted responsibility for its past conduct. They got a slap on the wrist and agreed to revise its internal procedures uh oh, and train its employees along with so many quarterly reports. All this bullshit. Slap on the wrist, man. Slap on the wrist, man. For its part, the Green family has framed this as a lesson learned. Okay. Slap on the wrist. They throwing Nagas in jail for nothing. They throwing, you know what I'm saying, Amaru Khan's in jail for nothing. And these folks is doing high level forge, forgery, smuggling, all this stuff. They pay $3 million. Don't even get listed on the case, my nigga. Lesson learned. I guess we all learning something. I guess we all learning something. In 2010, Hobby Lobby was new to the world of acquiring these items. Did not fully appreciate the complexities of the acquisition process. Read a statement on the country company's website oh we just checked out their website this resulted in some regrettable mistakes the company imprudently relied on dealers and shippers who in hindsight did not understand the correct way to document and ship these items why would they have to ship them if they were already here green says he takes responsibility for what happened he can't be taking responsibility he's not even listed on a case name 
We should have exercised more oversight and carefully questioned how the acquisitions were handled, he said in a statement on Hobby Lobby's website. Hobby Lobby has cooperated with the government throughout its investigation and with the announcement of today's settlement agreement is pleased the matter has been resolved. Slap on the wrist, my man. They crucifying us. They crucifying black people. They crucify poor people. But the rich people get caught time and time again and get nothing but a slap on the wrist. They're finding artifacts. Admitting that these artifacts were looted since 1990. Falsely labeled. Although they were already here since 1970, these objects were being stored in America already. So this is just, you know, one of many red flags when it comes to these artifacts and museums, Smithsonian, all these people are behind these major cups. Uh, reading the Lelouch, you see how they tried to brush off those artifacts and then, and then flip those and then act like they're from somewhere else and they do this time and time again with a lot of the GE Kincaid discoveries as well as many others, man. There's many other um, explorers and, and, and you know, so-called uh, archaeologists, you know what I mean, going around picking up Naga artifacts. And, you know, it, they have to play a game unless they get, you know what I'm saying, scrutinized. So unless they want to avoid the scrutiny, unless they want to avoid... You know, getting, you know, just taken out all together. They play ball and they say, all right, cool. You could relabel this. You could remix this. Just pay me. Just pay me. And a lot of people have been playing ball, man. But these folks have been playing ball, ball, <laughs> ball, ball. Three million dollars in the U.S. has seized these artifacts. And the case name don't got nobody but the artifacts themselves, man. Love to my Deidre. Y'all look into this further. And again, man, you know, you can go check out <laughs> the music in the box. <laughs> and, uh, you know, see what else they got cooking over here, man. Plan your visit. Go crazy in Washington, D.C. Apparently, they got all the drop. They got all the drop. They playing ball, man. They got all the drop. They even got the homies. His personal New Testament, George R. Rome, man. He got his own Bible. They got the African American Bible right there in the museum, man. Y'all go check that out, man. Y'all go check that out, man. <laughs> man, man, man. It's a sham, my people. It's a sham, and it's a shame, man. But I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all take these tests. <laughs> this particular quiz right here, man, is for you. You know what I'm saying? So... Win your prize. Hey, you got to get a higher score than me. That's all I know. You got to get a higher score than me, man. I'm participating. Y'all participate too, man. Show the bro Yosef that Ahab for all the great work that he's putting in, all the great dedication he's putting in, man. And uh, again, man, Ahab to the Ether Squad for all of your dedication, man. All of y'all going above and beyond. And I appreciate all the work that everybody's doing, man, to keep the water flowing all the time, man, over here at 432 the drop man make, make sure y'all check in check in clock in clock in and keep supporting the wave man and keep the lights on click the links below to keep the uh water flowing man so that we can keep doing what we do and bring our vision together and uh you know what i'm saying just make our website and make our flow make our stream you know what i'm saying as pure water as possible and uh just keep increasing man that's all we're trying to do right now is increase and it takes you it takes the entire tribe to peace up peace up and that, you know, we can uh, step in the right direction and keep them boots walking, man. Because Thai Battle got them walking in the drop, drop chatter. Y'all make sure y'all show love or else. Sparta! <laughs> Ew! Oh, man. Ew! Oh, man. Ew! Man, I could watch this a thousand times, man. Out the real ones. Truly love, I love what they're doing, man. Coast to coast and playing the play. We keep it suiting up. We keep it tribing up. Keep it vibing up. 
Allah wa da wa da to the home team.